Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Timothy Catholic Church, as tonight we celebrate our Easter Vigil Liturgy. And so as we begin, we'll be giving our liturgy outside, but it will be shown here on the screen, and they will process uh, soon in as we begin our liturgy. And so as we begin, let's take a few moments of quiet to prepare our hearts to enter into this liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray if we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, Yesterday and today, and beginning, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, at all times belongs to Him and all ages. To Him be glory and, glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By His holy and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Please stand. the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound a loud, a mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with the light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, Filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God the Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me the one worthy among the Levites, may pour into me, into his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, oh, oh wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, 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 truly happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a redeemer. Oh, 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 oh truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. 
drives out hatred, fosters conquered, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle as solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fires ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never deemed by the sharing of this light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, Lord, we pray that this candle hollow to the honor of your name may persevere undeemed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please extinguish your candles and be seated for our scripture readings. Dear brothers and sisters, we have now begun our solemn vigil. Let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these his last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all of the wild animals, and over all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant over all the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit to be your food. To all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Lord, 
stand, let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the age, end of ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I shall point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horn in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those who have redeemed O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children you promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace into which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with water like a wall to their right and to their left, the Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went in after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw them into a panic. And so he clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to the right and to the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. 
I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for that you once bestowed, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice you shall be established, 
far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great, in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in the way of enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasures? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light towards splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privilege to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood they had poured out on the ground and because they had defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I ask, act house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take away from among the nations and gather you all the foreign lands and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. pray. O God, who by the pages of both testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy 
so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin 
and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzled over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was with you still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their stories seemed like nonsense. And they did not believe them, but Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down and saw the burial cloth alone. Then he went home amazed at what, he, what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, here we are. It just boggles my mind how fast the Triduum goes, and here we are. The 
the vigil of vigils, the most holy night, the most elaborate liturgy that we have, and the elect are being ready to be baptized. And a word about that before I get into the homily. We had trouble with the heater. <laughs> uh, on the baptismal font. So it will be your choice. I'm going to get in the water. You know, one of our directors of, of uh, adult formation, when I first took the reins, said, Father, get in the water. He, he knew other priests that did this. Get in the water. And I was kind of a chicken. And, 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 and you know, that first year, I was, you know, there, there's always the issue of the mechanics of the vigil mass and everything, all these little, really thousands of pieces coming together to make this, this liturgy. And then getting in the font and getting out of the font and changing and getting up here and all this, it's like, but when I got in that font, I mean, I just felt joy, just felt joy. So I'm gonna do that today. Now, the elect, it's your choice. You're still gonna get wet. So you can go in, I think they've already instructed you, and you can kneel on that first little level area in the water, and I'll pour the water over your head. Or if you have maybe desired, maybe since the beginning of your formation and maybe before that, no, I want full immersion, and I'll take a little bit of chilly water uh, and just come down, just tell me, just tell me as you come in, I want full immersion, and we'll march you down the little steps a little bit past me, and then I'll place my hands on your shoulders and we'll say the, the proper formula of baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now realize you have to go under. I'm not gonna hold you under. <laughs> but if you wanna do that, I, I, I'm, I'm open to it. I gotta change anyway and I got, I got a new system. I mean, I've been thinking about this for weeks and months. Then when I heard that the heater was broke, I'm like, well, I want to try my new system because I, I figured I'd shave at least two or three minutes off of the changeover to get back here for the rest of the liturgy. Friends, we choose the way. We choose the way. Elect and catechumens, you have chosen the way. The way of life, the ancient Christians said. The way. In the early church, there was a document written called the Didache, in Greek meaning the teaching, and this teaching was attributed to the apostles. We don't know exactly who the author is. This is a post-biblical writing that contains so much of what the early church was doing and so much scripture and what it is to be a follower of Christ. And it begins saying there are two ways that one can follow, just two. I think about this when, when I consider my family and some of the folks that I've come to know over the years, maybe some who have strayed from the way of the Lord. He says, the, the author says there's two ways, the way of life and the way of death. And you have chosen the way of life. That's why we gather, all of us gather tonight we have chosen the way of life. And it doesn't seem like that to the people outside. They think you're, well, you're backwards. You, 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 my dad, before he, he became a Catholic, uh, that was the day before he died, I made him a Catholic. Um, <laughs> he used to say, because this was the image he got. And I can't blame him because he was really young and his mom brought him and his sister, who was just a little bit older than he was, to the Methodist church. And they, they went and they worshiped, and his oldest brother was a hero in World War II. My dad was just a kid, and he admired that brother. I don't know which plane that he flew on, the B-29, the B-17, I don't know. Maybe I won't know now that all of that generation, that greatest generation is gone. But he was a hero. 
And he was honored as such like we have, and we're going to set it up eventually in the new narthex, this, this, this board, this place where we remember our men and women in the armed forces. He was honored in something like that in their church. And I don't know all the details, but he met my Aunt Zita, who has now gone on to the Lord as well. And she was Catholic. And for whatever reason, Uncle Don converted to Catholicism. And when the pastor of the parish in that little town of, in Wisconsin find out, found out, for whatever reason, my guess is maybe Catholic priests did this in their churches too, they took Uncle Don's name down from that board. And my grandmother was so angry because she had raised six kids in the Depression most of the time without a father. My paternal grandfather died in 1932 at a very young age. She took those two kids, Alan and uh, uh, Aunt Elaine, and out the door they went and never went back. So this was my dad's vision. You're all a bunch of cattle. You all come in here, you can't think for yourself. You're like, no, no, it's beyond that. We, we follow the way. We gather because this is the way of life. There's more to it than just a mindless, let's just leave our common sense at the door. No way, not in Catholicism. Volumes and volumes and libraries and libraries are filled with the knowledge of the church. And we can't exhaust it because we are mining this, this, this uh, mine with that is so deep and so profound that it cannot be played out. It's because it's Christ. On Thursday, Father Augustine stressed the goodness of the Eucharist and the need for the priesthood. We've seen struggles in the priesthood in the last 20 years. We've seen it. We felt it. It's broken our hearts. But the goodness of the Eucharist remains. And he challenges challenged us. He said, don't let anything get in the way of your reception of Holy Communion. Don't let anything block you. So many things. We get in irregular marriages and we do all these kinds of things and then we find ourselves outside of that. He's like, no! Push the obstacles aside. I know a man in my last parish, I don't know how many years he prayed in adoration. He had been in an irregular marriage, and he would pray every day in adoration. He finally came to me. We came together and prayed, and by the time I moved over here, somebody sent me a picture, and his marriage was regularized, and he was validated, convalidated, and he returned to the practice of the sacraments. For all I know, that's 10 years ago. He might even be gone. Don't know but I got a picture of that. Don't let anything get in the way of what Father Augustine said of between you and the Eucharist. Not even, I mean, not even a goofy priest. You know, sometimes we'll go to confession and maybe Father doesn't understand us, maybe Father has a bad day, maybe Father is kind of, kind of wacky and we're at another parish and we don't know him very well and he says something goofy to us and then that's it, I'm done with the Catholic Church. It's like, no, don't even let priests get in the way, right? Be in sacramental communion and receive the Lord. That is the way of life. On Friday, Father Shea upheld the truth of our faith. And he said, it's not a myth. Our faith is not a myth. And people do claim that it is. He said, no, look at the creed, the Nicene Creed. You've got two merely human people mentioned in the Nicene Creed. One a pagan. First, the Blessed Virgin Mary and then Pontius Pilate. Can you imagine a pagan and forever remembered in a creed and, and Pontius Pilate didn't do fare too well after the death of Christ? It's not a myth. There is historical evidence. A writer named Josephus outside of the Bible wrote about this. There are others as well. We're going to the Qumran Hills in just a few days. Those are the oldest manuscripts from the Old Testament preserved there. There's even some messianic texts among those. 
2,000 years old. We're going there next week, some of us. What is the way of life according to the Didache? You've heard this before, catechumens, candidates, you've heard this before. And the author repeats it, love God and love neighbor. Love God and love neighbor. That's the first thing he says in the way of life. And then the second thing is the golden rule. Treat others as you would like to be treated. That's the second thing he says. And then it goes on to bless those who curse you. Love those who hate you. That's not easy. Abstain from lust. Turn the other cheek. Give to those who ask. Giving alms. Do not murder. Do not procure an abortion. Don't perjure yourself. Do not be a double-tongued person. Do not hate. Do not go to an astrologer. Do not lie or steal. This one got me today as I reread it. Do not grumble. How many of us grumble? It's like some mornings you just wake up and you're like, that's the gear I'm in. You hear me grumble? Yeah. And he says, it leads to blasphemy. And I thought about this. In my work history as a mechanic, you know, something doesn't go right, something doesn't go together right, and you begin to grumble, and then we begin to use the Lord's name in vain. We blaspheme. No, don't grumble. It leads to blasphemy, he says. He says, do not desire a schism. And some of this he's directing to catechumens. This is just a little snippet of this document. It's only 35 pages long of the way, the way of life. We choose this way because Jesus rose from the dead. He gave us all this instruction. And then he says, if you want to be my disciple, follow me. Then he's crucified and you think all is lost. And then, nope. In that quiet morning with those trees maybe as witnesses, of course the angels, the stone is rolled back. The tomb is empty. And the women come to anoint him. He's already been anointed, but because he is so special, right? They put 100 pounds of myrrh and ointments on him, and there's, because he's so special, they're like, no. Once the Sabbath ends, we're going to roll the stone back. I don't know how, and we're going to go and anoint him again. And they go and cry at his tomb, and then he's not here. He's risen as he said. He's risen as he said. And that's why we follow the way of life. He's shown us through death the way of life. So what is the way of death according to the Didache and those early followers of the Lord Jesus Christ? Cursing. Oh, we do this all the time. I mean, when we're driving, cursing other people, man, may this happen to you. No, 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 take that back. Take that back. Murdering, adultery, lust, fornication, theft, idolatry. You think, oh, who, who's an idolater? Oh, sometimes we put money way up there. We put our career way up there, maybe even above our marriage and our child rearing. And we, we make excuses for why we don't come to Sunday Mass. Oh, I got to support my children. Yes, but we also have to give the Lord his due. Witchcraft, the way to death. And so many of us play with this stuff. We play with the tarot cards. We play with these going to soothsayers and these people that read palms. No, man, we can't do that. When we do that, these, these demons start to cling to us. And they start affecting our lives. Charms. You know, we can wear the holy medals, but man, charm bracelets, I don't know if those are popular anymore, but they used to be. No, we stay away from that. Lying and bearing false witness against somebody. Double, having a double heart. Okay, I'm with, I'm with these folks, I'm one person, and then when I'm with these folks, I'm another person. And they, these other folks over here don't even know I'm a Christian. Fraud. I had a friend, and 
He was following the way, but like so many of us, battled with addiction, and he relapsed in his addiction. And he was selling things on the internet, I don't know exactly what, but it was fraud. And his partner, his partner in the business rolled over on him, and he went to prison. And I visited him, him. he's out, he's been out for a number of years now, but he did seven years for fraud. And he, he wanted to get upset, he wanted to grumble when I would go visit him, and he said, you know what? I was drinking, I was using, and, and this, is, this is the punishment for what I did. And he had me send him the Bible and some other Catholic material, and it really helped him through that time. Foul speech. I remember, and I, said, I mentioned this the other day, you know, this was a big part of my struggle as a follower of Christ when I first started following Christ, first using the Lord's name in vain, and then when I was able to step away from that other foul language, and somebody at work pointed it out to me, a Catholic, he himself was, was not a big churchgoer, but he's like, look at you, you say you're a churchgoer and listen to your language, and it took, took time, it took prayer, but we can be freed from foul speech as well. And then one of the last things, persecuting the good, those that are trying to do the things that are right. We follow the way of life. Today we celebrate the resurrection of he who is the way says. Before he goes to Thomas and the others, where I'm going, you know the way. And they, Thomas says, we, we don't know where you're going, Lord. This is before the crucifixion and death. We don't know the way, Lord. He, I am the way and the truth and the life. With one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. for us. Jacob, Joseph, Samuel. Pray for 
ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to the fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplished the wondrous effect through sacramental signs and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, 
teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of the newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Springs of water, bless the the elect, I have a few questions for you. The response is a resounding, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? A resounding, I do. <laughs> do you renounce sin, do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Molly, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. John Klein, come to the waters of baptism.
John, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jasper Favor, come to the waters of baptism. Jasper, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tyler French. Come to the waters of baptism. Tyler, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Alexander Harris, come to the waters of baptism. Alexander, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Miliana Horvath, come to the waters of baptism. So just kneel right here and face me. Is it Milana? Milana is correct. Okay, lean forward over your head. Milana, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Elias Murray, come to the waters of baptism. Elias, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Charles Joseph Odiambo, come to the waters of baptism.
full immersion or just about a quarter of the way down? Okay, so way down this way, close the gate. Charles is a great thing. Charles, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Aiden Razo, come to the waters of baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right, you did it. Xavier Razo, come to the waters of baptism. Xavier, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right. <laughs> Cassidy Savage, come to the waters of baptism. you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Please stand. Brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and again, a nice resounding, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life.
I now invite those candidates previously baptized who wish to be accepted into full communion with the Catholic Church to come forward along with your sponsors. My dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. My dear friends, the Lord receives you with the, the Lord receives you into the Holy Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. You may now return to your seats and I invite the neophytes to come forward. Wow, you're all dried off. <laughs> Dear neophytes, receive the light of Christ. Again, receive the light of Christ. As you have been enlightened by Christ, walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. And neophytes, I invite you to extingu extinguish your candles. Father, I, I now present those candidates previously baptized who wish to complete their initiation and fully join the Catholic Church through the Sacrament of Confirmation. As I call your name, please come forward. Esteban Camacho, Reginald Campos, Nicole Estes, Helena Favor, Tiffany Harris, Benjamin Hilgeman, 
Julia Lupica, Melissa Mike, Lily Muco, Matthew Muco, Luis Armando Pina, Joel Ramirez, Brendan Scott, Madison Scott, Amanda Sodoma, Alyssa Velasco, Jason Webb, Christina Alcantar, Anthony Alonzo, Jayani Begay, Alexandra Duran, Dolores Miller, Christina Muco, Richard Muco, Vanessa Pepion, Michael Redivo, Ariana Sandoval, Crystal Sandoval, Jessica Santana, Thomas Schwab, Carolina Simpson, Tayshawn Sinqua, At this point, we'll have you turn around uh, and face us as we prepare to um, pray over you, and then we'll ask you to turn back around as we move into the confirmation. Dear brothers and sisters, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and have become members of Christ and of this priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized, the promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them and confirm them with his abundant gifts and through, through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord and Jesus Christ, who brought these servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we'll have you... Turn back around for the anointing with the sacred chrism. Spirit of knowledge and fortitude. 
Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these sacrifices, these holy and un these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and his assistant bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer, it, we offer you the sacrifice of praise what they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health of, and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Cyprian Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set the free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Alan and Dolores and Maria, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a placement of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Messalinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech thee, into, into, uh, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. 
Gospel, the truth of all. 
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. A few people to thank first. But I gotta tell you, uh, that, that was really fun. That was really fun. Um, congratulations to all of our... I certainly encourage you um, to do many of the good things that you've learned in your RCI classes, RCIA classes, especially, you know, the adults and maybe, maybe the, the older um, kids that came through, to listen to Catholic radio. I, I, I just hear so much good come from this, from people that come to me and share that it has really enhanced, enhanced their faith. I uh, just want to thank our RCIA um, uh, Folks, that, that, that Joe and and uh, Brendan and all of the volunteers and all of the sponsors, uh, all that made this possible. And then for all these extraordinary liturg uh, liturgies, um, I want to thank Debbie and Emily and all the volunteers and all the maintenance people that, that assisted in putting this together. All the music ministers, David and Iggy, and all the volunteers and all, I mean. The, these last three days, I mean, we still got a, a little ways to go, but have been just incredible. I mean, um, I won't say which, but one of our priests said that th the Good Friday service was the most inspiring he has ever witnessed in his entire life. I mean, that's, that's the St. Timothy Catholic community. Um, just thank everyone behind the scenes, everybody who, who, uh, who went, you know, volunteered that maybe nobody knew about, I mean, maybe, maybe you're placing flowers and, and all these other kinds of things. And, and we, we got to use the new narthex, and, and now there's an elevator, and it only broke once since we got it. <laughs> we got an elevator and the parking lot, we wanted that to look very special for Easter, and so that got done. And just so many things, all, my, all these pieces coming together. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart for all that you've done, my staff, and, and everything that you've done to make this, this everything led up, everything leads up to the vigil. I mean, tomorrow it's a downhill, downhill. <laughs> <clears throat> but thank you so much.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of this Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses ended, alleluia. Oh, man.